This is a book that acknowledges that we're in a climate crisis, that it's a tragedy that has been going on um, for a very long time. And now we're at this kind of moment where there is actually an opportunity for a response, not just to the climate part of it, but possibly and hopefully to um, colonialism and exploitation and a lot of other things. I actually meant after geoengineering in two senses. One is looking at the long term and what happens after these technologies are used and how can they be ended. Um, but I also met in terms of after the word geoengineering, like this is a word I think we actually need to put out of service because it's vague, it doesn't get to the huge variety of things people mean. And there hasn't been nearly enough thought about what an intervention looks like throughout the long course of it, um, how that would be managed and negotiated, and how it would eventually be ended, which I think and hope would be the end goal is to use these technologies to stabilize the climate system, to buy more time for mitigation and all that infrastructure and social transformation, and then stop doing them and have it be really an, an episode of history where we kind of pulled together some of the tools we had and muddled through um, while preserving as many ecosystems and species and human well-being at and didn't have a war and all these other things kind of to get through a crisis point. And how, what's our long-term vision of what a world might look like in one or two or 300 years? It's very easy to say, see how companies would be like, well, we can slow down on mitigation because we're gonna just suck the carbon out, right? Um, and I think we have to engage with it anyway, despite that distinct possibility and keep that from being what happens, because that's the default. Um, and I think that these technologies have some promise, because if the carbon is underground, it's not in the atmosphere where it's hurting people around the whole world. Um, I think the climate's safer that way. The climate could even be restored to some extent. It's very easy to see a path, which is probably the default path, where this technology is developed by elites for the profit of elites. And I think there's another option. What if these technologies were um, democratically controlled, democratically researched and governed and collectively owned? We can imagine carbon removal um, in particular, perhaps even solar geoengineering, that takes a different stance in relationship to the natural world, that thinks about we are intervening in this system, but we're doing so with an ethos of care or tending and listening and being responsive and recognizing um, a certain place that isn't one of domination or mastery.